the ultimate stealth build. Of course, you guys know me. I've always got my stealth build because I love putting on my sneaky pants and hiding under your bed at night. But in any case, today's build is all about stealth. Any and all skills that have remotely any usage in stealth has been acquired. But since it's now even easier to acquire high tier skills in the skill revamp, we're going to go all out and get just about every possible stealth setup all into one build, which includes normal ECMs and body bags, but also sensor mine C4s for easy spotting in the enemy. Let's take a look at the skills that I'll be picking up for this. Most of the stealth skills are all in the Shinobi subtree of Ghost. As such, I've picked up Chameleon, Sixth Sense, Cleaner, ECM Overdrive, Nimble, and ECM Specialist All Ace. Some other skills that are very nice to have for stealth are Enforcer's Transporter, as well as Mastermind's Stockholm Syndrome and Forced Friendship. And to get to these skills, I also had to pick up Confident and Resilience. Now, some of these other skills that I've picked up, not necessarily necessary for a stealth build, but nice to have regardless, are Duck and Cover, Parkour, Inner Pockets, Second Wind, The Professional, Optical Illusions, and Equilibrium. Now, the mobility skills, Duck and Cover, Parkour, always nice in any build. Inner Pockets and Optical Illusions, good concealment skills for any build that requires it, so stealth builds and dodge and crit builds. And the Professional and Equilibrium help with your silenced weapons, this one in particular if you have pistols. Now, for your general stealth setup, we've pretty much picked up everything that is, well, more than enough for any stealth heist in this game. But, since we've got a few extra skill points left, we can afford to be a little bit greedy. With the glory that is the Jack of All Trades, a skill that allows you to carry two deployables, we can grab one of the lesser known assets for stealth, C4s. If you've seen some of my old builds in the past, you'll know how useful they can be, and if you're new, well, I'll be showing you just exactly what I mean in a little bit. For now, let's pick up these skills for these C4s. Third Law Ace, to get to the Jack of All Trades Ace, Hardware Expert, Drill Sergeant, and more firepower for all the C4s. The weapons in this build are super straightforward, Use anything you fancy with decent concealment and you're good to go. For me, I have the Car 4 with a Stealth Barrel, Aftermarket Special Hand Guard, Ergo Grip, Vintage Magazine, Folding Stock, and the Exotic Receiver. For my secondary, I'm going to be using the Judge Shotgun with Triple Lock Buck, Silent Killer Suppressor, and Lead Combo. For my melee, got a 30 Concealment Melee, Ace of Spades Throwable, primary ECM jammers and secondary C4s, and I'm going to be using the two-piece suit. I also forgot to mention with my skills that I will be using the Burglar Perk deck. So, the reason why I call this the ultimate stealth build is because it literally has everything you could ever want, all in one build. No need to switch and respec your skills, it's all right here in one. So, while we're discussing the build, it won't actually be too focused on the actual skills. For the most part, while the skill revamp did end up changing a lot of the skills we know previously, stealth skills actually did not change much at all. In fact, other than being moved around or being grouped together with skills they weren't previously paired with, stealth skills did not get an overhaul at all. In essence, if you've seen my other build videos oriented around stealth, then you get the general gist of what the build can do. Even if you haven't, the description of the skills in the skill trees is pretty self-explanatory. So, as such, I won't be scrutinizing over all the skills and what they can offer. Some are pretty common sense things to pick up, like ECM skills, lock picking. Some may not get as much use, but still have some very situational purposes, like picking up items in casing mode, being able to make noise to intimidate civilians, stuff like that. So, before I made a couple builds for stealth. One where it's a general stealth setup, meant to tackle most situations you'd find yourself in. One where it's revolved around C4 sensors, where you'll generally be sneaking around the same area over and over, so it's handy to have mines to spot and detect patrolling guards. And I think I've done a few combat ghost-oriented setups, a pseudo-stealth build if you will. This build has pretty much got all that in one. The skill revamp made it a lot easier to get to the higher tier skills. Now, you don't have to invest too heavily in the lower tiers that you never wanted to get just to get to the higher tier skill that was your intended goal, which allows for a lot more variety in build setups. Like, I was able to get Stockholm Syndrome with relative ease, which is a pretty situational but handy stealth skill for any heist that has copious amounts of civilians, despite the fact that the skill is in Mastermind and not in Ghost. Another thing that you probably keep hearing me mention is that now, similar skills are all consolidated into subtrees, 
meaning for anyone that wants to make a general stealth build, it's incredibly easy to do so. Pretty much, as long as you stick to the Shinobi subtree of Ghost, you have a super solid setup that's good enough for nearly any heist you want to do. It's nice for someone like me who switches builds a lot, and if I want to make something sneaky, I don't have to think too hard about what to get. And it's even better for newer or lesser experienced players. One thing I always forget is that for this game, stealth is sometimes a daunting thing to approach. Going loud is simple. You shoot shit, you fix drills, you move bags, you don't die. Understanding it doesn't take too much. But learning all the nuances of stealth is something you can't just drop into the game and instantly know how to do. Detection mechanics of guards and cameras, what assets are the most helpful for stealth, what kind of patterns guards take, the best routes and map, and most importantly, even what skills to bring. In the past, you had to worry about what to pick, even more so than now, since there were things like Dominator, Shinobi, Fast Hands. Now, stuff that's just passive bonuses for everybody, but before was absolutely necessary skills for stealth. By giving us these passives, as well as putting most of the important stealth skills in the Shinobi subtree, not only is it easy to decide how to build your setup for stealth, but it's also a lot easier to make this setup at lower levels, instead of requiring high levels and a lot of skill points to be able to get a full stealth build. So now, let's talk about the real MVP of this build. Technician's Jack of All Trade skill. A skill to allow you to carry two equipment, one primary and one secondary with half of the total amount of the secondary. And what I mean by that is, say you have two meds and two ammo. If your meds are your primary, you'll bring two of those, and if your ammo is your secondary, you'll only bring one bag. This is absurdly powerful. Equipment in this game is one of the most useful assets you can have on your person, whether it be stealth or loud. Carrying a combination of meds, ammo, C4, sentries, whatever, is immensely helpful to you and your team. For stealth, there are three equipment that you normally bring. The no-brainers, being ECMs, and the body bag case deployable. ECMs for jamming cameras, opening security doors, blocking pagers, blocking calls to the police. Body bag case for, well, more bags to bag dead bodies. <laughs> the third option, for more daring people that don't think they'll need either of those, is C4. C4 with sensors are actually a very valuable asset in stealth. Combined with good surveillance spawning cameras and pre-planning, you can make it a lot easier to detect all the guards on the map. I mean, just look at this run of framing frame. By bringing both ECMs and C4s, I have the best of both worlds. ECMs is a fallback in case things get hairy, and C4s to help me spot guards, almost as if someone was scrubbing the cameras for me. I've got a good bearing on where most of the wandering guards are at all times, despite playing alone. Imagine if you had this type of situation, but while playing with other people as well. You could have the usual, ECMs for days, but everyone could carry a backup asset. Maybe someone with body bags, maybe a shit ton of C4, or maybe even ammo if someone brought a saw to open deposit boxes or something. You can get some decent concealment even with the saw, so that option is also pretty plausible. Honestly, in a really low-key sense, it feels like you're Batman with this build. You literally got this stupid ass utility belt that's got everything on it. There's nothing you don't have. And no, this isn't a Batman build. You don't need to tell me, oh, Batman doesn't use guns. Oh, you're so bad. Well, speaking of guns, it's super straightforward too. Just get anything with good concealment. Again, pretty similar to the other stealth builds I did, so I don't really need to talk too much about it. Bring in a shotgun, useful for propelling bodies if you need to kill someone and get them out of sight. Anything else you might want to have is really up to you. Pistols, assault rifles, bows, whatever. I also ended up taking the throwing cards again since they're the free stealth option. I also ended up with a few extra skill points and even got myself a few silencer skills, making combat with the stealth weapons you use a little bit better. So if you're ever in that situation where you're almost at the end but you do one slip up getting the extra loot or something, it makes it easier to deal with the enemies when going loud just further reinforcing that this build has really got almost everything you might possibly need for stealth. Lock picking, camera loop, inside assets, casing mode skills, ECM skills, cable ties, transporter, body bags, C4s, you got it all. This update is almost like a wet dream for anybody that tends to stealth a lot, with or without people. Then again, the new skills are really nice for anyone that likes to go loud, with or without people. Skills like Messiah, Stockholm Syndrome, make going solo a lot less painful. Still painful, but a little less painful. Anyway, that's really all I've got to say, without going on and repeating the same exact some of the other stealth builds that is. So, enjoy the rest of the gameplay, still got a little bit to go, moving bags takes quite a while alone, so uh, well, you'll see how it all turns out. Anyway, thanks for watching.
down to the vault and plant it outside in the pre-vault room. Hey, check the guard. It's a guard, watch it. Careful, guard. Guard, stay quiet. and plant it outside in the pre-vault room. That's four. That's five. That's six. That's seven. That's eight. That's it. Fine work. The escape is ready for you. Unless you want to stick around and clean out the vault. Either way, the vehicle's waiting. If you want to go for more, use this desktop PC. Open the vault up for you. Feels good to be around. Well, we didn't get the gold, but we'll still be compensated for the success. 